All right, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this beautiful Thursday afternoon for our Hunter College Music Department Music Talks and Tea. This is an ongoing series where various professors and students um, discuss all, very, all different kinds of topics, music related, generally speaking. And um, for those of you who were with us yesterday, I gave a um, one hour lecture on what it's been like for me as a musician, a performing and recording musician during the pandemic and um, talking about the kind of music that has been made because music has been made in some cases extremely inspiring and creative music and um, in most cases utilizing technology in ways that are um, that are fresh and new and, and incredibly inventive. So um, what we didn't get to do yesterday, though, was really dig into the music itself. We listened to bits and pieces, but uh, in, the, in an effort to try to cover as much ground as possible, I um, skipped over a lot of, of great music. And of course, there's so much more I wanted to get to. So today is kind of a follow up to yesterday's discussion. All the music that we'll be listening to today was made during the pandemic. Some of it is um, uh, our, our, our recordings of live performances. That is, these were streams that took place live and originally were listened to uh, live by people around the world on their computers and phones. Um, but in other cases, this is music that was created in a more recorded environment. That is, um, and there's a lot of different examples of this in different shapes and forms, but music that these artists recorded, overdubbed themselves, perhaps overdubbed other individuals who lived far away, record, playing and recording their music and then put it together into um, a, a, a whole uh, piece of music and then presented that virtually to the world, either on YouTube or Facebook, etc. So. Um, without further ado, the first thing I want to listen to today is a live performance done on March 18th. And if you remember, I believe the lockdown, at least for us in New York City, occurred around March, I think it was the 16th or 17th. So um, not only was this incredibly forward thinking, because what these two musicians did, of course, would wind up being... Um, uh, not necessarily copied, but but it really kind of set a standard and a very high one at that for musicians around the world in terms of ways they can still perform, ways they can still share their music with others, um, and ways they can still raise some money because they um, had an option for donations um, during this Facebook live stream, and I'm I'm hoping we're able to um, supplement their performance financially. So um, we're going to start with perhaps the the, the greatest jazz vocalist of my generation. Her name is Cecile McLaurin Salvant, um, a, just a pure virtuoso vocalist, but also a master of the jazz um, language in many different genres. And she is accompanied by her longtime musical partner, Sullivan Fortner on piano. So I'm going to share now their performance which was originally presented on Facebook. And of course, that's where it still lives. You can go and listen to this whole performance. You can see it was almost two hours long. We're just going to listen to the first song. But this is Cecile McLaurin Salvant with uh, Sullivan Fortner on piano. Think 
that it was true. So Just like a gypsy Two modern day virtuosos, geniuses of our of our language. Um, just my own thoughts on that. I love the way that they kept things casual and intimate using what looks to be like a laptop camera and, and, and microphone or maybe a, a cell phone camera and microphone. No high production video and lighting and uh, as you'll see in some cases people really went all out in terms of trying to make their production look as beautiful and sound as beautiful as possible, but um, something about the intimacy and the casual nature of their performance um, for me is, is really touching. Um, so moving on right along, in no particular order, um, actually, you know what, maybe I will, maybe I'll stick with the live performance and, the, and then move into more of the recorded performances. Um, so something I meant to talk about yesterday that has, for me, um, been a, a real eye-opening technological advance. It's not new technology, it's been around for about 10 years, but the way it's being used to allow for live virtual performances is, is brand new. And there's an audio program called Jack Trip. Jack like the male name and trip. Um, all one word, Jack Trip. And what it is, is a, it's a fairly sophisticated, pretty complex to use computer audio software that allows musicians who are not in the same room or even the same building, in some cases not even in the same city, to play together in real time. Now that sounds like maybe it would be easy to do, but if you've ever experienced the kind of audio lag when you're using FaceTime or Skype or Zoom, you know that it's significant. And when you're talking about musicians playing in time, even the slightest bit of lag, I'm talking milliseconds, will create complete havoc in terms of um, the musician's ability to sync up and play together. So this, this audio um, 
technology jack trip as i mentioned been around a while but um uh, one of my peers a friend of mine great pianist and technological genius and i don't use that word lightly named dan tepfer decided to use it and he then also wrote some software that he was able to sync this audio to video and has been presenting live duo and trio performances every monday on facebook and um, one of the first performances he presented with another human being playing together this would have been about a month and a half into the pandemic when no one had been able to do that that is play together with another human um, was with uh, another good friend of mine the bassist in my band catharsis named jorge roter so i wanted to play a piece of music that they performed so this is dan and jorge both in brooklyn but in their own apartments miles apart playing together in real time and playing a fairly quick tempo. And um, I've been also using this program, Jack Trick, to play with Dan, but I'm about 90 miles away up in the Sullivan County Catskills. And so we can only play so fast before the leg that does still exist between he and I starts to get in the way of our ability to, to sync up. So um, that's not a problem though for this performance since Jorge and Dan were in the same city. And um, here is a bit of their live performance playing together in their own studios, own apartments in real time. Here we go. <laughs> That's why we put aside $300 million. All right, that is that, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure why it suddenly stopped, but they were on the head out, so we, we got to hear most of their performance. So that is um, a, a truly miraculous discovery um, by Dan and a handful of other musicians. Um, you can tune into Dan's Facebook page every Monday, and he is oftentimes performing in duo with other musicians from around the, the tri-state area. Um, when we, when he and I first played together using that program, I think it would have been in early May. Um, for me, it was, it, it was really transformational because, um, of course, I knew how important playing, making music, playing with other humans, has always been in my life, um, truly my whole life, just about. Um, and then not having the ability to do that for six weeks at that point. But to then kind of release the floodgates of that pent up energy was a transformational moment. I'll never forget the day we spent. We spent hours and hours playing using that program. Um, and it, yeah, it's a, a moment I'll never forget. So Jack Trip, definitely worth checking out if that's something you're interested in pursuing um, for those musicians out there. Um, so next up, I said we're gonna stick with the live performances first and then we'll get into some of the recorded performances. Um, so another live performance. So obviously all of these performances, these virtual performances are utilizing technology, both audio and video recording technology. But this person 
uh, this really incredible piano player who I've also had the pleasure to, to play with. In fact, um, this pianist Fabian Almazan um, was playing, was, was filling in on piano in my group Reverso as we toured around the country just before the pandemic hit. Uh, in fact, we did a, I think it was a 10 city tour throughout the month of February all around the country. And so Fabian was playing with us on much of that tour just a brilliant guy um, on many, many levels. But one of the things he's doing with the piano is creating um, um, special effects on the piano, much like you've heard guitarists do, or maybe less frequently even horn players do, but it's very difficult to do that with a piano because on a piano, the sound's coming from all directions. And in order to use effects, you need to harness all that sound and then send it through these different pedals or effect boards. Um, so he, uses a pickup that he puts on the underside of the piano and that pickup captures all the resonant sound waves that the piano um, uh, creates. So it's not actually mic micing the sound, it's, act it's, it's more of a pickup like you'd have on a guitar where it's capturing the resonance, the vibrations. Um, and then he passes that through any number of different effects and he was messing with this when we were on tour every night he'd be getting into some different sounds but um, then the pandemic hit and I can only guess that he was holed up in his apartment and was just digging deeper and deeper and deeper into this technology because what you're about to hear and see is um, truly extraordinary in fact I, I want to um, get a lesson with him just pay him for his time and try to figure out all that he's doing here because it's just unbelievable. I've never heard anything like this, let alone on, on a piano. Um, so this is Fabian Almazan, great jazz piano player, performing uh, his rendition of a famous Charles Mingus composition called Goodbye Pork Pie Hat, utilizing some unbelievable sound effects uh, technology here. Here we go. Mm -hmm.
it there. Um, the rest of that is available on his on his um, YouTube page. But really incredible stuff. Um, yeah, he just constantly is discovering new ways to use this this technology. Um, and as if the piano is not a powerful enough instrument already, just to give it that extra sonic uh, dimension is really, for me, it's very exciting to witness. And I don't, from what I'm aware of, I don't think it's been done before in that way. Um, so, let's see. I think let's move along now to um, some pre-recorded music that has been created during the pandemic. Um, we didn't have a chance last yeah, yesterday to talk about the recording industry. It, like the live music industry, was completely shut down. Um, and only over the last month has it started to reopen. Uh, one of the things that I do, aside from um, leading my own groups and, of course, running the program, the jazz program at Hunter College, is I also do uh, quite a bit of um, recording work in New York City for film um, and television soundtracks. Um, and so that industry was totally shut down, but as I mentioned about a month ago, started to reopen, but of course it looks very, very different. So now rather than recording the whole orchestra at once, they'll do the strings and a smaller string section at that one day and everyone's sitting six feet apart. And then they'll have the brass come in and we're each in our own ISO booths and we have to bring our own little container to um, put our, our um, instrument condensation into, otherwise known as spit from our spit valve into. Um, pack in, pack out <laughs> kind of situation. Um, it's pretty intense. We have to wear our masks all the time when we're not playing. Um, but things are starting now to, to open back up. But of course, for over two months, that wasn't the case. And so musicians stuck at home and m most of which these days, uh, like you saw Fabian there, had pretty sophisticated techno uh, elect uh, um, techno technological setups microphones, preamps, digital interfaces, et cetera. Um, I myself kind of invested in a pretty um, sophisticated setup shortly after the quarantine was put into place. So, um, you know, using the right kind of musical setting, you can record um, a group of people when everyone is in their own space, overdubbing one part of the time uh, it is possible. Now you lose a lot of what makes jazz so special because in order to record in this format, you've got to record to a click track or some kind of steady tempo that coordinates things. Um, and, and you lose that opportunity to truly and spontaneously communicate with one another. All the little details that jazz musicians are so um, expert in um, listening for and responding to in real time are lost because um, this is it's no longer a two way conversation. It's a one way conversation. But with that being said, there have been some pretty cool um, recordings made during the pandemic. And because uh, the, one of the conversations we got into yesterday was our reliance on on visual stimulation. And because we're consuming all of this content now almost exclusively in a visual format, most of these recordings were done also with video. And you've seen these videos. Uh, not the ones I'm going to show you, but this style of video where you have multi, uh, you have multiple camera angles, multiple people, multiple screens, and then they're edited together in various ways um, to create these kind of um, pseudo group performances. So um, I was lucky enough to be a part of a number of these oh, over the last few months, and I wanted to share a few of my favorites with you. The first is from one of my favorite songwriter composers in jazz. He's an alto saxophonist by trade named Will Vinson. He and I went to school together many years ago and um, just writes unbelievably catchy, quirky, sophisticated songs. And um, he just recently started arranging them for large ensemble. And with the pandemic, everyone's at home. People are willing to help their friends out, you know, oftentimes making these records for free or for very little money because we've got nothing else to do. Um, so he started enlisting his close friends to um, record these big band arrangements. So the one I'm about to show you features me on all four trombone parts. It features a couple of trumpet players, um, each on two of the trumpet parts. It features Will himself on the alto parts, et cetera. And it's an all-star band. He has... Um, he has Gonzalo Rubalcaba playing piano, one of the, the all-time living great pianists of our age. 
uh, Jeff Ballard playing percussion, one of my favorite jazz drummers. So um, because everyone's at home, it allows people like Will to enlist the help of musicians who you would never, ever get in the same room at the same time if you were playing live in person. So that's another advantage of making music in the pandemic. Um, so I'm going to share this for you now. This is a song of his called That Happened. And this uh, he um, premiered on Facebook and I believe on YouTube as well. Um, here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
stop it there. Such great writing, great songwriting uh, for starters, most importantly. Um, so let's listen to some more recorded music during the pandemic and specifically these, these music video recordings that everyone is so fond of these days. Um, let's see here. Just recently, actually, there was a premiere of a video that I was a part of this. We recorded this way back uh, in late April, I think. Um, but it was a massive, massive undertaking. And then it was eventually premiered by the Jazz Standard, one of the preeminent jazz clubs in New York City, uh, and also partnered up with um, New Jersey Performing Arts Center. So um, the leader of this band, Ryan Truesdell, was uh, smart to try and get some of these presenters on board because they've got nothing else going on either. So everyone's kind of looking for opportunities for um, just kind of creating and presenting anything. Um, and I think it hopefully also helped um, just spread the music a bit more and provided greater reach. Um, and then there was also a fundraiser um, that was that was um, coinciding with the premiere to help raise money to pay the musicians. Because when we recorded this originally, um, none of us were paid. Um, obviously, Ryan's not making any money on it either. But in any case, um, this is a group that Ryan leads. He's been doing it for about 10 years now called the Gil Evans Project. Most of you are probably familiar with Gil Evans, one of the greatest jazz composers and arrangers in the history of our music. Um, most famous for his work with Miles Davis, um, Sketches of Spain, Porgy and Bess, his arrangement of, of that, another album, Miles Ahead, um, Birth of the Cool. These are all projects that he and Miles Davis collaborated on together. So um, one of the pieces that, that he's most known for, as is Miles, is a piece called the Concierto de Ar Arenoise. And uh, that's from his Sketches of Spain album. And Ryan enlisted... Uh, all the members of the band to record this, much like we did with the last project, we're overdubbing parts. I'm playing both trombone parts, um, and you have know, trumpet players playing multiple trumpet parts, etc. And then Ryan did this really incredible editing job, um, very sophisticated final product, and then premiered it just a couple weeks ago. He also did a Q and A before and after with some of the musicians in the band. So really cool um, way to try and bring music to our listeners in the pandemic age. So I'm going to share this with you now. This is the Gil Evans Project led by Ryan Truesdale. This is featuring a great trumpet player named Riley Mulherker uh, standing in for Miles Davis. And this is the uh, piece from Sketches of Spain, Concierto de Arenues. Here we go.
stop it there. Obviously, there's a lot more. It's a long piece. It's almost 20 minutes long. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm standing here listening to this, and it sounds so normal. And it sounds like music that we're used to hearing. But you have to remember that just about every jazz or classical piece of music you've ever listened to or recorded by musicians who were at the very least in the same recording studio together, but probably in the same room together. And every, both of these, these uh, recordings I've played here, every person was in their room, in their bedroom and somewhere in their house by themselves, playing by themselves to either a click track to help keep the time, or in some cases, um, these band leaders will create kind of synthesized MIDI, which is a uh, computerized sounds uh, versions of the songs that you can play along with. Um, but all the things that go into making music cohesive, intonation, tempo, time field, rhythmic subtleties of groove, those are all things that you really need to be in the same room together to achieve. So the fact that um, in both these cases, uh, the music doesn't really suffer from a lack of quality in those in those uh, ways is a testament to the musicianship involved uh, and also the band leading involved because it requires a lot of organization and forethought to make this happen um, and definitely there's a lot more going into it than what you hear um, in in terms of the final version so um, i'm going to skip the next recording i think we're getting a little bit low on time i want to play um, a couple more things, though. One thing I want to play for you is one of the few pieces of music that I created myself during the pandemic. Um, shortly after getting my microphone, I was so excited, I decided to start, uh, I mentioned this yesterday, start overdubbing myself and create some trombone quartet versions of music that I wrote many years ago for brass quartet. So this is a piece of music that I wrote for a good friend's wedding. It's just simply called Wedding Music from... Uh, 2000 and um, 2003 and just uh, again a couple months ago recorded it um, with my new microphone the electro voice re20 which i love and um, did a little just basic editing actually just using garage band believe it or not nothing fancy nothing super high tech and i'll play just a bit for you now i'm just going to share the sound. So you'll just continue to stare at my beautiful face. Here we go. This is just audio. <laughs>
called Wedding Music, done in quarantine. Um, so the idea was originally, and still is, um, to put that to video. I recorded myself playing all four parts with a green screen. I had these really um, kind of huge and creative visions, but it requires me learning Adobe Premiere, which I just haven't gotten around to doing. Um, but one of these days, I'll, I'll put it together and put the video out. Um, but not a whole lot of uh, motivation to finish these projects when we've got plenty more time uh, to to to, um, to to take up during this this period of quarantine and pandemic life. Um, so before we get to our Q and A, I want to play one more. Um, this was one of the most powerful things that um, I've heard. Uh, during the pandemic. And this is someone actually who, uh, whom we listened to a bit yesterday. This is the great Scott Robinson. We listened to one of his Mingus renditions yesterday um, in which he overdubbed all uh, these various um, instruments and parts. But something else he did shortly after the uh, murder of George Floyd was perform a piece uh, in dedication to George Floyd's memory. And um, it just incredibly moving. Um, I haven't seen anything quite like it or heard anything quite like it. And it's it's a long piece, so we're not going to listen to the whole thing, but uh, or maybe we will. It's 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 just an incredibly powerful, powerful work of art, musical art. So I'm going to share this with you now. And again, this was released on his YouTube page. He has um, uh, a record label and uh, kind of nonprofit organization called Science Sonic Laboratories. And if you like if you like what you've heard, you should check out just Google Scott Robinson saxophone or Science Sonic, all one word, laboratories. And you can actually subscribe, become a member. And like we talked about yesterday, this is just one of many ways musicians are trying to find a way to to make some money and supplement their their um, non-existent income during this this time period. So this is. Here we go, Scott Robinson, a piece called Eight Minutes and 46 Seconds, which is uh, the time in which it took George Floyd to uh, succumb to, um, to the events we all have now witnessed many times, and which I hope will have really kind of changed our, our world here for the better. Here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Wow. Yeah, serious piece of, of art. Hearing that note sustained for that amount of time really puts the whole event into perspective in a different way. Um, so, <laughs> kind of brought things down a bit, but um, I want to just thank everyone for being here, both on Zoom, our, our Hunter students who are with us on Zoom, and for the general public joining us on YouTube Live. Um, we do have just a few minutes left for uh, uh, questions. If anyone has questions about things we've listened to or um, other, other related topics, um, now is your chance. You can um, enter them into our Zoom chat feature, or you can also enter them into the YouTube question feature. So I'm just going to wait a moment and give you all a moment to uh, do that if, if you so choose. So it looks like there was one question that came in, I think from Scott Robinson himself might be joining us. We are in the presence of greatness. Um, Scott is asking, what is with the double trigger trombone <laughs> in the background? Good eyes, Scott. Also, you might see my cat back there, Birdie, in the background. Um, so one of the things that uh, I, I do not very well and, and very much privately, um, or I certainly try to keep it quiet, is I, I dabble on the bass trombone. And um, specifically for those movie soundtrack recordings, it's oftentimes the case that um, when I get called to do um, um, recording projects these days, they want a bass trombone double. So I have gotten my chops up to a, to a sufficient point in which I feel kind of comfortable going in and playing some easy bass trombone parts. Um, it never is not nerve wracking though, because I'm, I'm generally sitting there sharing the studio with um, trombonists from the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra or trombonists from the New York Phil and the string section from the New York Phil. So the pressure is intense uh, to bring it, but um, I, I enjoy the pressure and I enjoy the challenge um, I love the low register of the trombone. Those of you who know my music know that it's a register that I'm drawn towards and I have affinity for. So it was kind of a natural transition, although the embouchure changes and just the equipment differences are no joke. They are, the tenor trombone and bass trombone are nothing alike, that is for sure. Um, but yeah, I've got it out. I've got a recording this Sunday that I'm going to be going down to the city for. Um, so I'm trying to get my chops back up into shape. <laughs> Um, any other any other last minute questions here? Doesn't look like it. Um, we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that then. And I just want to thank you all for being here, joining us. We do have um, a continuation of this series. Our next event is coming up on Tuesday, August twenty fourth. And um, here's the slide for that. Oh no, August twenty fifth. My my apologies. And it is going to be a discussion given by our student and faculty um, music reading group discussing the book. Um, um, shoot, I forget the name of the book now, but a really insightful book on racism in our country um, and particularly why it's so difficult for us to talk about it. And when I say us, I mean white people <laughs> to talk about it. But um, you can join us for that 12 p.m. on August 25th and um, follow the Hunter College Music Department Facebook and YouTube channels, uh, Instagram feed, so you can stay up to date um, for upcoming events of all kinds. This fall, we will be teaching and learning uh, remotely, uh, virtually, exclusively online. So um, that's always a challenge, but it's also exciting because as we learned in the spring, there's a lot of different um, uh, uses of this technology that we never really even dreamed of before. So we're going to continue to explore those options as we um, hope to come outside the other end of this pandemic in the not too distant future. So thanks again, and I hope to see you all again soon.
Bye-bye.